This image was taken right here in Clayton Bay in this observatory in South Australia. So it's a southern object that we can see um, almost directly overhead. It's um, located in the constellation Orion. So there's bright stars in there reflecting all this light out to it and it makes this go blue. Where this um, red stuff is, that's emission. That means that these electrons are being stimulated to make them go red. All images, digital, are taken via a process called sub-exposures. So you need lots and lots of sub-exposures to increase signal and reduce noise. So noise is an errant thing. You know, when you used to take photographs and they're all grainy and speckly, and all, that's noise. No one wants it there. Everyone wants a lovely smooth image. Sub-exposures create less noise, higher signal. So on this particular telescope, I take hours and hours and hours over multiple nights. This image has probably taken over or oh, probably about four or five nights. This mount actually counteracts the rotation of the Earth. So it, it actually has a process of guiding. This is a guide camera. This camera focuses on a star and then it tells the information on a computer where to keep that star right in that spot all the time. This telescope would move from say over here the horizon and it would just slowly track all the way up until it reaches the meridian. When we get to the meridian, we turn around, flip over, bang, and head towards the other horizon. The camera shutter is open for 20 minutes and it just tracks that part of the sky all that time for 20 minutes. Then after that, it takes another one and another one and another one. And eventually it builds up enough data so you get good color. Is that really what that would look like if I was in a spaceship flying around? Well, to be honest, no one's actually been there no one's probably going to be there for quite some time. The colours are reflective of what would be there to our eyes in dim light. If you're looking at this through a telescope, this is just grey. It's a bright grey spot with lots of stars around it. There's no, you don't actually see the colours, but the colours are really there. It's just our eyes don't have the capacity to open up so wide to see the colour. Once you do the glossies, everyone does the glossies, you know, M42 and some of the other notable Messier objects. Then you start thinking, oh, I'd like to do some of the not so bright ones, the ones that people don't normally image, and they are difficult to image. The more difficult it is, the more you want to image it, because you want to produce a fantastic image. The beauty of this is you can do this year after year. You can just put it in the same spot it was and image that same object two years down the track, and it will still be there. It won't have changed. Well, not that we know of. So you can go back over and over and over and collect more and more data. How do you feel about that one, that finished product? How does that rank in I'm your... very happy, yeah. This image has been um, published in Australian Sky and Telescope. Um, it got a full um, page, um, which was my first full page. Uh, very, very happy with it. Yeah, it's great.